The following program is paid for by Don Gartner Ministries. What is your righteous cause? What is God's righteous cause? My, my righteous cause is to, to push the kingdom, to advance the kingdom, to bring attention to God's direction, to bring attention to the will of God. What is the vision for your life? What has God said to you? What, what prophetic vision has God released to you? Has God released the prophets to speak into your life? Has God showed you in a night dream, a night vision of what he has said to you? See, we have to understand that God's will is for us to walk in vision. For without a vision, without God's vision deep within inside you, his people will perish. And Satan is trying to keep the people of God blind. He's trying to keep the people of God ignorant concerning the will of God. He's trying to keep the people of God ignorant concerning their purpose and their destiny. But God wants you to have a full understanding of what he has said to you about your purpose, about your destiny, about the dream that he has placed on the inside of you. He shot you into the earth for a purpose. You didn't shoot yourself into the earth. You didn't come here by osmosis. You didn't come here by your own power and by your own strength. You came here with the intentions of a holy God. You came here with the intentions of a holy visionary. His name is Jehovah. His name is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. God has given you a vision. It's his vision. Your vision is his vision. Are you hearing me today? Every person was created by God to be unique and distinctive. Every individual God has placed in every human being a unique a unique vision and called that person to move in a great meaningful life. You don't have to be bound and ignorant and full of no hope and wondering, Lord, why am I here? What is my purpose? Lord, I'm just coming to church and living a mundane life or just living, just living, looking out the window, trying to gaze and think about what's going on. What should I do? I don't have any direction. You know, most people that don't have no direction, you know what they do? They get up off the couch and every now and then they look out the window and go back to their seat and get off the couch and go look out the window. What's going on out there? <laughs> because they don't have vision, so they don't have direction. They, they just want to see what somebody else is doing. He don't want you looking out the window. He wants you to create the window. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. Look at Genesis chapter 1. You should be already there. Look at verse 20. We're going to read from 20 to 28. I want to show you something. Verse 20, 28. If you have a say amen. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that has life and fowl that have that and fowls that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created whales and every living creature that moveth with which the waters brought forth abundantly and after their kind and every wing filed after his kind. And God saw that it was good. 22. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters. Fill the waters in the sea and let fowls multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. 
And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw it was good. 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. When he said let us, he was talking to the, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. He was having a round table board meeting. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so God created his own, created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him and male and female created he them. 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Somebody say dominion. And dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Now, when you read this, you see God created man to lead and have kingdom rule. But only within the guidelines of his leadership. God said, let us. Let us make man. God, get, he delegated authority to man. Hello, somebody. Man didn't create not one animal. Man did not create one fowl of the air. Man did not create the water. Man did not tell the water to stop at a certain line on the beach. Hello somebody. Man did not do anything but obey what God told him to do. Are you hearing me? And I'll say it again. God created man to lead and have kingdom rule but only within the guidelines of his leadership. Say this with me. God owns everything and we own nothing. God owns everything and we own nothing. If you notice in the scripture, Adam didn't own anything. God owned everything and Adam owned nothing. Adam was a kingdom manager. He was a kingdom steward over what God had entrusted him to oversee. And we are, that's who we are. God owns everything and we own nothing. You think you own your company? You think you own your church, your ministry? You think you own your life? You think you own your health? God owns everything and we own nothing. But he has entrusted us to oversee what he has given us. To be good stewards, kingdom stewards, kingdom managers. The definition of manager is a person who has control or direction of an institution, a business, administrator, a boss, a controller, a conductor, a, a controller, a director, or liken unto a CEO. A chief executive officer over things. God made you a governor, a handler, a head person, an officer, an organizer, a producer, a proprietor. That's what he made you. Now, the word steward, because we need understanding of these words. Steward is a person who manages another person's property. Come on, somebody. Is not that what Adam was doing? He was managing another person's property. Huh? He named the animals. He was managing another person's property. Because see, Adam didn't make himself. God made Adam. We own nothing and God owns everything. Are y'all getting this in your spirit today? A person who manages another person's property or financial affairs. One who administers anything 
as the agent of another or other. A person who has charge of the household of another, buying or obtaining. Steward, an employee who has charge. A person who tends to domestic concerns of. Some of the synonyms of a steward would be a representative or an administrator. Adam was an administrator. You are an administrator over your, finance, of your finances. You administrate over your household. You administrate over your children. You think you own your children? You're an administrator over your children. Hello, somebody. Those children belong to God. A flock belongs to God, not to the pastor. The pastor said, those are my sheep. No, they're not. No, they're not. You've been delegated to manage that flock, to love that flock, to oversee that flock, to shepherd that church. Amen. Apostles, they're, they're, they've been delegated churches to oversee churches, to care for the churches, to love for the churches. Amen. To strengthen and equip those churches. So God will make you an attendant or a guardian or a manager. So my question to you, are you managing well what God has given you? That's a good question. Are you managing well what God has given you? Are you managing as a parent? Are you making wise decisions as a flock? Whether you are an overseer of a local church, business person, a homemaker, a student, or a head of state, Pastor Don Gardner explains how you can make your dreams and hopes a living reality. Your success is not dependent on the state of the economy or what the job market is like. You do not need to be hindered by the limited perceptions of others or by a lack of resources. Discover time-tested principles that would encourage you to fulfill your vision no matter who you are or where you come from. You were not meant for a mundane or mediocre life. You do not exist just to earn a paycheck. Revive your passion for living. Pursue your dreams. Discover your vision and find your true life. In the DVD and CD series of The Principles and Power of Vision, you will learn you must see what God sees about you. Life without vision. Vision the key to fulfilling your life's purpose submitting to the vision of God for your life, and being patient in fulfilling the vision of God. To order your DVDs or CD series today, please visit dongardner.org online. The order number is shown on your screen. You may call 888-529-9292 for additional information regarding Don Gardner Ministries. Don't delay. Visit dongardner.org today. Jeremiah 29 11. Turn there very quickly. Jeremiah 29 11. If you have it, say amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, an expected end. Somebody said an expected end. Do you know that God's vision toward you is actually a very positive, blessed vision? Hello, somebody. The New International Version of Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts or the plans I have for you. God has plans. His vision. I need you to see what God sees for your life. God's vision is that he has a plan for your life. He has a plan for the church. He has a plan for Israel. He has a plan for Jerusalem. He has a plan. 
God has a plan. We think God is just, just sitting around twiddling his thumbs. No, God, he has, a, he has vision for his church. So Adam committed high treason and turned his authority over to Satan. Unfortunately, that looked like, well, it was all over. Well, you know, don't know one monkey stop a show. Amen. You always have vision. Amen. You should have a plan A and a plan B. Hello, somebody. Amen. Don't get stopped and stuck because your one idea didn't work. Keep on moving forward. I love God. God is so smart, so intelligent. God has a vision. He knows what he's doing. God believes in his people. He believes in the church. He has a vision. He has a vision for your own personal destiny. He says, I know the plan. That's powerful. I know the plan that I have for you. It's a plan. Do you have a plan? Can you write your plan down? The Bible says write the vision down and make it plain. He said, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Ooh, that's so wonderful. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The New Living Translation says, I know the plan that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for good and not disaster. God doesn't have a, a vision of disaster for your life. If you're experiencing disaster, that's not God. That's not the will of God. The English Standard Version says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not evil. God has already got your welfare covered. Amen. If you're on public aid, believe God to get off of it because God got your welfare. Hello, somebody. The God's Word Translation says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and not evil. New American Standard says plans for welfare and not for calamity, but to give you a future and a hope. I love the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you and not abandon you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. The contemporary English version says, I will bless you with a future filled with hope. A future of success, not suffering. Come on, can God make it even more plain? God said, I love you. My vision is good and not evil. I have destiny for you. My destiny is long and not short, but it's all under the guise lines of my leadership. Can you follow instructions? Can you follow the instructions of a leader? God is the ultimate leader. When you follow the vision of the house, when you follow the vision of God, your life will be blessed. Happy is he who keeps the law. Happy is he, happy and blessed and enviable. You will be enviable. People will envy your life because of the blessed status that you walk in because you have chose to walk in vision. Chose to follow the leader. Now, it's very important that you understand one thing, and that is this. When God speaks to your vision, and I'm about to close. God told Jeremiah in chapter 1, turn there, turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. Look at 
Look at verse 4. We're going to read from verse 4 to verse 8. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, I Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said, somebody say, but the Lord said. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Now, when God has a vision for you and for your life, God sees what you may not see. You see, vision is something that is revealed of the spirit. Sight is revealed with the eyes. And we have to be able to tap into the spirit of God. We got to tap and see what God is saying. We got to tap and hear what God is saying concerning our lives. Tap and see what God is saying concerning the church. Tap and see what God is saying concerning the nation. We got to hear what God is saying. The Bible says it this way. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God told Jeremiah, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. This was the vision of God for Jeremiah's life. This was God's vision. I said, this was God's vision. What was God's vision? God ordained him to be a prophet unto the nations. He separated him. It, sanctification means separate. He separated him and sanctified him unto, unto God, unto himself. He made him a prophet unto the nations. This was God's vision. And then Jeremiah said, ah, Lord God. I cannot speak, but I'm only a child. See, vision has a lot to do with your identification. Vision has a lot to do with revelation knowledge. You need revelation knowledge so you can understand who you are. The enemy want to keep you in a place of the status of a child. Do you know a child cannot be responsible over grown folk things? A child cannot be responsible over kingdom things. Amen. You will not give a gun to a child. You can't give a million dollars to a child. You can't give keys to the kingdom to a child. But God said, I don't see you as no child. I see you as a prophet to the nations. This is my vision for your life. And so therefore, you got to come in agreement with what God see. Because see, what God see is better than what you see. Hello, somebody. What God see is better what your mama see. What God see is better what your daddy see. Yo, God sees what God see is better what your best friend. Whether you are an overseer of a local church, business person, a homemaker, a student, or a head of state, Pastor Don Gardner explains how you can make your dreams and hopes a living reality. Your success is not dependent on the state of the economy or what the job market is like. You do not need to be hindered by the limited perceptions of others or by a lack of resources. 
Discover time-tested principles that would encourage you to fulfill your vision, no matter who you are or where you come from. You were not meant for a mundane or mediocre life. You do not exist just to earn a paycheck. Revive your passion for living. Pursue your dreams. Discover your vision and find your true life. In the DVD and CD series of The Principles and Power of Vision, you will learn you must see what God sees about you. Life without vision. Vision the key to fulfilling your life's purpose. Submitting to the vision of God for your life. And being patient in fulfilling the vision of God. To order your DVDs or CD series today, please visit dongardner.org online. The order number is shown on your screen. You may call 888 529-9292 for additional information regarding Don Gartner Ministries. Don't delay. Visit dongartner.org today. Buckle up and hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get out of hell free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live life to the fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts and that God put that dream there, not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real, it is living, it is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through, of all people, us. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier-than-thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people, but He is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church.